So, um, welcome to today's lesson in theoretical mechanics. So today we'll be discussing rotational and translational motion. And our discussion is just going to be solving of questions. So I'm going to can renovate this today into mathematics can yesterday. Please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and like the video if it helps you. So the first question says we should distinguish between rotational and translational motion. So here we are going to take three different differences between them. So the first one, rotational motion occurs when a body moves in a circular. So the most important here is circular. So it moves in a circular shape about an axis. So that's a what the rotational motion is. So for instance, we have this point here. The rotational motion is when if you have a body here, the body moves in a circular form. Then translational motion occurs when body shifts in point in space to another point. So translational motion is when you have a body here and the body moves in a line, a straight line. Right, so that's one of it. Or another point you can use is rotational motion is a motion in which the relative velocities between any two particles of the body is zero, whilst translational motion is a motion in which the relative velocities between any two particles of the body is zero. And another one you can use is Rotational motion is a motion in a circle. Translational motion is a motion in a straight line. So know that we've already explained that above. So this happens to be the answer to question one. Then we have a second question here. We says a field spinning at three meter per second uniformly accelerates to six meter per second in four seconds. If the radius of the hill is 20 meters, how far around the hill will a speck of dust travel during that time interval or that interval? So, note that from our question, you realize that the hill was spinning at 3 meters per second, right? So, that means that our initial velocity here is 3 meters per second. So, that's what you can see here. So we are gathering data from our question and the final velocity is 6 meter per second. So that's what you can see here. Then we have a time component here and our time is 4 seconds. So that's what you can see here. Right. So the question says that if the radius of the hill is 20 meters, then how far around the hill will a speck of dust travel during that time? So the radius is 20 meters, but that is going to be relevant in solving this particular question. So to solve this question, we are going to use the Newton's third law of motion, which is the final velocity squared minus the initial velocity squared equals 2 times our acceleration times our distance. So here we want to find for our distance, S here. But note that we don't have E from the question. From the question, we have initial velocity, final velocity, and time. So we know that from the first law of motion, our E, acceleration, is equal to the change in velocity over time. So we can compute our acceleration. So the change in velocity is going to be the final velocity minus the initial velocity which is going to be 6 minus 3 over time, that is 4. So, it's going to be 6 minus 3 over 4, which is going to give us 3 over 4 meter per second squared. So, this is going to be our acceleration. So, note that from the Newton's third law of motion, or Newton's third law, the equation for it, we have v squared minus u squared equals 2ax. So, when you make s the subject, we are going to get s will be equal to v squared minus u squared over 2a. So 
making substitution, we have 6 squared minus 3 squared over 2 times a. So our a is 3 over 4. That's just what we computed. So when you do this computation here, you're going to get 18 meters. So that means this is how far um, our speck of dust is going to travel, 18 meters. I hope you understand how we solve this question. Alright, so let's move on to the next question. So the next question says if you should state the law of total energy conservation. So the law of total energy conservation states that the total energy of an isolated system remains constant over time. Alright, so thank you. And we have a last question which we are going to tackle here. So the question says that a bicycle wheel of radial 0.75 meters rolls down a hill without slipping. Its linear velocity increases constantly from 0 to 33.89 meter per second in 2.95 seconds. So we are supposed to calculate the angular velocity and the angular acceleration. So before we do our calculations, we have to get our data from the question. So we have the radius to be 0 0.75 meters. Now, the velocity increases constantly from 0 to 33.89 meters per second. So that means that we started at the resting point. So the initial velocity is 0, and there is a final velocity. Then there is our time component. So that's the data. So our radius, our initial velocity, final velocity, and the time component. So the first question says if you should find the angular velocity. So know that the angular velocity omega is given as the change in the linear velocity over the radius. Right? Or in some books you can see just the um velocity over the radius so in this case since our starting point is zero that means that the change in velocity is going to be equal to our velocity so you realize that our velocity is 33.89 meter per second that's our final velocity and the radius is 0 0.75 meters so when you make substitution we are going to get 33.89 over 0 0.75 which is going to give us 45.18667 when round to three, two decimal places gives us 45.19 rad per second and this happens to be the value for our angular velocity so the second question says we should find the angular acceleration so the angular acceleration alpha is just equal to the change in the angular velocity over time right and it has another formula so another formula is is equal to the change in linear acceleration over the radius so when you use either of these formula you are going to get the same thing so we are going to use the first one so angular acceleration is equal to the change in the angular velocity omega over time so it's going to be 45.19 right per second minus 0 right per second so 0 right per second because you know that our initial velocity was 0 so it's going to make this component 0 so all of our time which is 2.95 seconds and when you do this computation you're going to end up with 15.3186 which round to two decimal places gives us 15.32 rad per second squared and this happens to be the angular acceleration so I said you could use the a second formula for it which is your angular acceleration is equal to your change in um, linear acceleration over the radius so remember the change in linear acceleration or acceleration is going to be so these are not important, let's just use it acceleration. So 
you let me come here and do it acceleration so this is going to give us b minus u over t right and we know that b minus u that the final velocity minus the initial is um 33.89 minus 0 over 2.95 so when you make this computation you are going to get eleven point four eight eight so eleven point four eight eight and then from here we know that our angular acceleration is equal to our linear acceleration which is eleven point four eight eight over our radius which is zero point seven five so eleven point four eight eight over zero point seven five gives us 15.532 rad per second squared. So when you use either of the formula, you are going to get the same answer. So thank you very much.